This is a better angle for the remainder of the project. Oh, by the way, don't forget to use gloves with that expanding foam. I took them off, forgot to put them back on, and it's taken me a little over a day to get it off of my fingers. Um, it's still left on my fingernails mostly. Anyways, pain in the butt. I'm gonna now drill a hole right in here in kind of the nook of this big cork round um, to act as another plant, planting spot for um, something, something epiphytic that doesn't need a whole lot of soil or anything, just needs to be kept moist. And then I'll set up misters to wet it as well as other plants up here. Now I'm going to drill some holes as uh, water, water drainage pathways. Hopefully I can do this in a way where the upper ones will feed the lower ones a little bit just off of their watering. Okay, now I'm going to position the hides. I baked these all in the oven uh, beforehand as I mentioned before um, about 225 degrees for an hour and it helps dry out uh, the remainder of the inside um, that and any of the remaining bits uh, become just uh, real dry and loose kind of flaky and it's easy to, to scrape them off all right, I want this one to go right here, up at the top. Um, I need to shave this bit down more though so that it'll fit, so that the actual screen can fit on top. here and over here too. I'll give you a better shot from the front of what it looks like. Alright, so looking straight on at it. Okay, next step, we're going to cover all the uh, foam that we cut the smooth surface off of to expose the more textured undersurface. Um, we're going to coat it in 100% silicone type 1. It's important to use 100% silicone and type 1 specifically because it doesn't have any of those uh, mold and mildew inhibitors, those additives, um, which can actually make it unsafe for your animals. So um, this this silicone right here, for example, is GE brand specific, 100% uh, silicone all purpose. Um, um, it'll say, this one says window, door, attic, trim, flashing. Um, the type twos oftentimes will say like bath and kitchen, a more, more uh, wet, wet area type applications. Anyway, something important to note there. All right, and once we coat the foam and the silicone, we'll then uh, top it and stick a loose coconut fiber uh, eco-earth to it. And that'll give it a natural look so you don't see the foam. And then we can add stuff on top of that layer later. And again, don't forget to wear gloves with this because this stuff, you need... Uh, mineral spirits or paint thinner to take off. It's not like other cocks where water does a pretty good job. I'm just squeezing some out and then using my fingers 
uh, to smooth it around the foam. You want to be careful not to get the silicone on any of your cork bark or decorations or anything because you'll have to wait for it to dry and cure and then still it's kind of a pain in the butt to take off. Depending on the size of project you're working on, um, probably have to get several tubes, like full size tubes of this silicone because once you cut away the smooth upper surface of the foam and you expose the really porous undersurface, um, it's got so many different pores and pockets and everything to soak up and hold that silicone, so you end up using a lot. I'm just putting extra in one of my hands and kind of pulling it away with my other hand. I've already used probably a quarter of the tube and I'm barely started. And you're probably going to end up having to do two passes with this anyways. So don't worry if you don't get it covered 100% the first time. This is just the initial layer again. You'll add stuff on top of this later. It's not a bad idea to wear a respirator when you're doing this if you would like. 100% um, silicone is pretty fumey. It has acetic acid in it, which is the same acid that's in vinegar, so it has a very strong uh, vinegar-like smell. And when it comes to downing your actual planters, even though you're not going to see those. They'll be filled with dirt in the plant itself. It's a good idea to fill in most of the pores and stuff with the silicone anyways, just because it'll act like um, a flower pot essentially, and it'll also stop the um, water from seeping down into the foam over time. The foam itself is almost waterproof, but now that we've cut away that smooth upper layer, um, which is the main bit of that, I think. Um, it's going to be able to seep in through cracks and aging over time. The silicone helps prevent that. Actually, coat the inside of the bark as well the cork rounds that is because it helps prevent the degradation and just rotting of the the bark over time and again i only do this on the inside where the soil and the plant's going to be you'll probably have to re-drill your drainage holes after this and i forgot to wait on that step because you're probably going to fill the, at least the initial hole up with silicone, right? Okay, so now I'm going to start covering everything in coconut fiber. I've got a pretty thick layer of silicone across all of it. And for the record, I used two full-size tubes um, just to go through the first pass, which was the majority of it.
now that you've got a solid layer lay, laid over it, um, you're going to want to press on it evenly all over just to make sure it really sticks. Okay, I'll come back in several hours or maybe even just tomorrow and um, sweep and vacuum up the excess coconut fiber. Um, that'll help in the curing process of the silicone. Even though the silicone will say that it cures, um, depending on the type, anywhere from 12 to 48 hours or whatever, because of the amount that I put on here, um, and the thickness in some places, I'm probably going to give this several days, like anywhere from three to five, to cure completely. Um, then I'll keep on adding uh, surface decoration and everything. Alright, I'm going to add another layer of, uh, well I guess in this case it's going to be moss. Add some green to the landscape, essentially. Um, it's the same deal, I'm just going to use silicone to attach it. I wouldn't necessarily use silicone again to do this, but um, important fact about silicone is that <laughs> Uh, with 100% silicone at least, about the only thing that really sticks well to it is more 100% silicone. So you don't want to use glue or anything for this process. So I'm going to be using a combination of mosses. So I'll use some uh, so-called frog moss. I'll be using some uh, pillow moss. Some stuff I've got left over. All that royal pillow moss. This one in particular is made by the Galapagos brand. Then I've got some uh, just regular long strand uh, green sphagnum moss I'll use too. This is different than the New Zealand type stuff, which has kind of got a golden color. Oh, also I'm going to be using some of um, the Galapagos brand sheet moss. You can see this is the big bag of it. And this stuff is good because it's not quite as thick as the pillow moss. Um, and it comes in these big sheets, so it's nice for backgrounds. Next thing I'll add some lichens to the cork bark and whatnot as decoration. Um, and then we'll be real close to adding plants after that. Alright, now I'll give you guys a look at what I've done so far with the lichens. I don't think I'll add much more aside from this, but... Uh, you can see there is a lot of uh, fruticose lichens, like that guy dead center, um, then also uh, folios lichens, there, some there. Uh, keep in mind all the moss and the lichens are 
really dehydrated right now. They're still, you know, straight out of the package. So they're going to look quite a bit different once they're hydrated. There's still some drill dust around from where I drilled out drain holes in the cork. So this is kind of an aside note, but something you got to see is so sometimes when you build the expanding foam up too much um, and there's a weak spot in the foam somewhere, uh, pressure um, will be released and with that any sort of moist foam left over and apparently there was still some wet foam under this after almost a week even. Um, which is surprising, but you can see at the base, at the base of this whole background and whatnot, a line shot out of the bottom somehow and built this structure that blew up. And I'll show you the three dimensionality of it. Look at that. It's amazing. Built like this crazy metallic looking tree. I've seen foam released before, especially when cutting into it, but never something formed like that. It grew and grew vertically. That's awesome. Wow. Okay, so I brought the setup inside and kind of played around with where I want to put plants, but I'll do that after the substrate layer, of course. So what I've done right now is laid down the first layer of uh, hydro balls or... Um, so what they, what they are is clay balls that help um, as a, let's see that, okay. um, they're clay balls that help as a drainage layer for water, and they also help with humidity because they've got a lot more surface area so that when they get wet and whatnot and as they, um, as water evaporates off of the clay balls, um, basically maximizes surface area for water to evaporate from, so it really helps with humidity. It's going to be good for the geckos and the plants. Um, so I'm going to add a few bags of these balls. First, kind of going to smooth it out. This, this layer um, should be right around, uh, I'd say, three, three, maybe even four inches deep. So I'll give you a shot of all this from the side once I've got it all put in. Okay, so now I've got all the hydro balls laid down. You can see we got it all evened out. Um, that's probably close to three inches deep, so I think I'm going to keep it right there. Next, I'll put a layer of mesh on top. So what this layer of mesh is going to do is help keep any of the soil above the mesh from um, slipping down into the hydro balls and dirtying that up. So it's going to create a good divide. Um, for this drainage layer um, because if you don't use some kind of mesh to separate um, your drainage layer from your soil then eventually all your soil is gonna break down um, and turn into kind of a mud and once enough of it gets down into your drainage layer you don't have a drainage layer anymore um, it just fills in all the gaps basically so I pre-cut this piece of mesh I cut little sections to go around the bamboo Fill that little gap in. All right, next I'm gonna top the mesh layer with a thin layer of New Zealand sphagnum moss. Now I'm gonna spray down the sphagnum moss with some water, and this will just help it to hold its shape and position uh, for the next step, which is to add a thin layer of crushed charcoal. 
Now I'm going to add some crushed charcoal. I'll put a thin layer of this over the sphagnum moss. And then after this, we can actually add the soil. This charcoal is going to help um, protect the, against there being an anoxic layer at the base of the soil. Um, the other thing that will help with that is having your cleanup crew bugs, like uh, dwarf white isopods and then springtails. Those are the two organisms that I use as my cleanup crew. One more bag. Just to remind you of the base area of this enclosure. It's 18 inches squared. So 18 by 18. That should give you an idea of how much of each of these materials to use when you're creating your substrate layers. Yeah, I'm going to do the same to this and mist it down. And if I haven't mentioned it in this video yet, because um, I know I have in the past, but anyways, um, all the water that I use for misting in my enclosures is RO water, and RO is just the acronym for the filtration process, which is reverse osmosis, um, and that helps to remove all the uh, hard, hard minerals and... Um, various things that cause water spots on glass, so it's really useful for that application. And now I'm going to add the first bit of soil. Um, this is just a mixture of some leaf foliage, um, some organic sphagnum peat moss, some um, coconut fiber, um, the eco-earth, and then um, a little bit of perlite, organic OMRI certified perlite, and I'm going to put some OMRI certified organic um, potting soil, topsoil, on top of this. This is just to kind of fill in some of the depth, and then I'll use the potting soil specifically with and around the plants. This moss that you see here is just stuff that fell down from the background. No big deal, I'm just going to leave it down in there. It may be important to mention, uh, the reason why I've mixed leaves in with the substrate and um, sphagnum moss and everything, uh, other than it just being good uh, bioactive soil materials, is that... Um, it serves as food for the cleanup crew bugs, so the springtails and the isopods, uh, they will feed on the moist, decaying leaves and other materials. Very nutritious. Okay, so I've laid that first layer down of the actual soil. Um, I put in about probably two inches of depth, uh, probably around, I don't know, I'd say 12 12 quarts or so volume ice. And next I'm going to actually add the the organic potting soil as the topsoil. It helps a lot if every now and then in between layers you mist, mist it down really good with water. Um, it's going to help prevent dust kicking up um, and also make it easier for the soil to become hydrated completely later. Okay, so now I've poured the topsoil in. Uh, this is, by the way, um, this is Black Gold brand, um, OMRI certified organic potting soil. And if you're wondering why I was dishing it out from a um, oven pan or grilling pan, <laughs> it's because, like always, uh, I baked this organic soil in the oven for an hour at about 300 degrees to kill off any unwanted pests that might have come with the soil, because I'm going to be adding my own organisms and whatnot, and I don't want to introduce anything from outside of those, and I'm just patting it down. Not too hard, but, you know, just to keep it solid have a good amount of composition and then when I got to plant stuff in it I will move it around 
So I've actually already got all the, my plants ready that I'm going to plant in here. I use the same soil, actually, um, to plant them in coconut fiber pots ahead of time. Um, and I moistened them down. And the reason why I did plant them in coconut fiber pots is because um, they are natural and will break down over time, over a period of many months. And so what they do is they give a good amount of structure for your plants. Um, just kind of hold the roots in and keep the plants from tipping over. Gives them a nice pot to grow in and get started out in. And then the roots grow out. And as the plant expands and the pot breaks down, the plant can expand and break out of that pot when it wants to and at that point it should be pretty stable in the soil and environment that it's in so they're nice pots to help the plants transition so before I actually plant all the plants into the cork grounds in the background of the terrarium I just wanted to give you a look at where we're at right now so you can see the soil layers really clearly right now I gotta moisten that down a lot but I'll show you the planters. Um, so you'll notice first I put some New Zealand sphagnum moss at the base of all the planters. Um, and then after I laid a thin layer of the sphagnum moss, I then put a thin layer of perlite over it. And that's going to help as a drainage layer actually within the planters. And that'll ensure that there won't be any sort of root rot or anything. Um, and this probably isn't completely necessary to do, um, but it's a nice added step on top of the uh, drainage holes that I drilled into the cork. Alright, now time for the plants. Also in shed. She's my only crusty that's tailless. She's a little thin right now. She's been laying a lot of eggs. Okay, this is Nebula. This is my male Cosmo. He's a 100% pinstripe. Black and yellow. Uh, he's fired down right now, but normally his sides are really like a true dark, almost black. I'm trying to give you a look at his head. Look at, he has a huge head. I'm in the process of making a separate enclosure for Cosmo at the moment, but they have been communal and successful for several months now. Maybe those on the move. There's a orbit and Jupiter all the way back up in the corner. Hey guys, thank you so much for watching. Uh, if you have any questions, please post them in the comment section below. If you like the video, please like and share. And if you haven't already, please subscribe. And if you want to be notified of when I post new videos, please hit the bell right after that subscribe button. And I will see you next time.